Welcome back, everybody, to uh, Monday Night Brawl. Good to see everyone after a whole week of not streaming. Whew. So for those who... Let me scoot this mic up just a little bit here. There we go. Uh, for those who... Yeah, we'll start on normal. Um, I'm sure I'll be fine. For those who listen to the podcast, you probably already know this. Um, but I had to kind of go on last minute vacation mode, um, last week because from last Sunday, not yesterday, but a week from yesterday, all the way up through the week, I had caught some sort of stomach virus or flu and, uh, just got annihilated. Like I got screened. They thought I might have COVID. I had to quarantine myself for quite a few days away from my computer and my stuff because it's in a, um, kind of a more cross common area with my family and uh, went, was in and out of the hospital. And luckily I don't have COVID and I didn't pass anything to my family so far as I know, but I'm still kind of feeling the residual effects of being sick. And of course I was way too sick to stream last week. So I basically just lost a week. Uh, but we're back and we're going to play, we're going to play Hyrule Warriors. Uh, uh, you know what I just did? I'm sorry. We're going to start that over again. So, um, yeah, we're going to play Hyrule Warriors, the demo that came out. And since the game is coming out, um, I should have it by not next Monday, but the Monday following, I believe. I think. The way that the release date works out. Yeah. Then we can just continue the story. And the original idea I had and something we had talked about previously on the show uh, was just playing through the Hyrule uh, Warriors Age of Calamity story on Mondays for funsy since it's a new game. So we're going to do that. So this time I'm going to take my hands off the controller and uh, give it a chance to kind of run through the movie and do its thing so we can check it out. Now I've already played this a little bit, of course, because it's been quite a while since it, uh, it came out. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to get it on the stream, especially for Monday Night Brawl. I think it's in the spirit of it, for sure. So, yeah, this is just, uh, what we all know happened. The War of Calamity took on over all the ancient guardians and the ancient tech. Ganon's just swirling around, like, doing his victory lap. It's hard to believe that, like, just a few months ago, I had no idea this game existed. It literally came out of nowhere in September, which is drop, boom, look at this. I mean, I think we all knew a Zelda property of some sort was coming forward pretty soon, and we all just assumed it was going to be the Breath of the Wild sequel, which I still think is probably going to drop next year. I really do. Um, but this was a pleasant surprise. I have been, uh, again, for listeners of the podcast, you probably already know this, but I've been listening to, or listening to, I've been playing a lot of uh, regular Hyrule Warriors and Fire Emblem Warriors lately, and really getting into them, and dreaming about the sequel. Like, I'd love to see a Three Houses Fire Emblem Warriors 2 that featured mostly Three Houses characters, maybe still throw in a couple of the other characters. But what I really like about this, I think one of the weakest aspects of Warriors games is their story. They do that half-assed, oh, all the universe is crossed over. And it's always kind of lame. <laughs> and this seems like the story is going to be a lot stronger this time around. People are a little worried that this little egg guy and the fact that like he already sees the devastation and he goes back in time, they're going to try to retcon the story. I don't think they're going to retcon the story at all. I think that the fate is inevitable, but maybe it could have been even worse. Or that maybe this might put into play a few things that helps Link out you know, in, the, in the Breath of the Wild game. So I think it's just going to click a few pieces into place. I'm not too worried about that. What I am excited about is just being able to play as the champions and uh, hang out and check out all the different movesets and everything. In the demo, we get access to three different characters. We get Link, we get Zelda, and we get Impa. And they all play wildly different so far, as I can tell. And they're starting off with their base combos, which isn't very long. You get to expand them a little bit during the course of the demo. Uh, 
Um, that's the only thing I kind of regret. I wish I could see like the full combo strings of these characters, but. And I wonder if they're going to do the thing where you play as the bad guys for a bit, because that'd be kind of fun. Like Master Koga and some of the other new bad guys that they've introduced in the trailers. Um, they're playing as some of the monsters, maybe. I don't know. Might be kind of fun. I'm interested to see what kind of amiibo functionality goes along, because I got all the amiibos. It's been a while since I got a new Switch game that was compatible with amiibo. Lately, really, not really been using my amiibo for much, except for um, Breath of the Wild and uh, Smash. That's really it. And Fire Emblem Three Houses. You get good stuff with the Fire Emblem Listen amiibos. Well, soldier, new music. In our long history, we have scarcely faced a threat of this magnitude. Scarcely faced a threat of this magnitude. So many dudes. A thousand warriors on the battlefield. Yes, we have unearthed. Um, and if the audio levels are a little off, I apologize. I um, wasn't feeling super good today either. I almost canceled today's stream, but I was like, I gotta, I gotta fuck it up. Um, so I was just trying to get myself together before the stream so I wasn't super sick or uncomfortable during it. So, luckily, we'll be, I'll be playing this back and kind of listen to it pretty deeply. And, and if I see any issues with it, then I'll make sure by next Monday the sound is better. I'm probably going to have to redo the sound anyways, because even though this is a demo of a game I'm going to get, the game could be mixed differently in its final version. So I can't assume that the audio is going to be good just because I get it done on the demo. For king and country! Alright, let's go. So one cool thing about Link is he can continuously seek shield surf. Just boom. Just do it. As long as you just keep pulling forward. And as soon as he hops off, just re-up it. It's really neat. In fact, there's good mobile attacks at the other characters, too, I believe. It's, I mean, at least with Impa, I know for sure. Um, which is kind of cool. So, his whole thing is... I mean, he's probably the most basic of the three characters... But if you activate a special attack, like right here, I activate a special attack. If I hold it down, you see how it, like, tinged a second time? That whole extra attack at the end, or that flourish, was because I held it down during the attack. So if you just do it regular, like one, like one, two, sp oh, okay. One, two, special. That's it. But if I go one, two, special hold, release special again. And he does this big old thing. That's kind of neat. And everybody has a right trigger move for Link. He just kind of pulls out bow and arrow and shoots it. It's good because it gives him a ranged attack, I guess. And there are, like, triggers for ranged attacks. And, of course, spot enemy weak points. Just like in uh, the original game, Breath of the Wild. Hitting enemies on the head is effective. Not really needed for these little jobbers, but when we get to larger enemies later on. And, of course, you got your Muso attack that charges up. I like so. Cool. And then you got your dash. So we're gonna head over here where it's telling us to go and defeat this moblin. Nice dodge. Take that. So you can still dodge attacks. Oh. Oh. Okay. It's a little trickier to pull off because it's not exactly the same button combo as in Breath of the Wild. So if you're used to Breath of the Wild, it's a little stiffer. And I, I'm pretty sure you got to use different weapons, but that's okay. Right there, what I did, I just bounced off of that cart and then used my, uh, this is a thing that you can do if you double tap dodge. And that gets me in the air to hit his weak point on his head. 
and that depleted the rest of his gauge. I get this weak point smash. Boom, he's done. That's kind of cool. You can pretty much do that anywhere. Just double tap it, boom. And if you pressure fighter fast enough. Now, I just picked up apples, so if I can hold down the shortcut menu. I can press to eat an apple if I need to heal myself in this battle, which is going to be helpful because I put it on normal. And I'm not exactly leveled up yet, so if I'm not careful, I might end up needing that. Might end up being a little bit more of an emergency. Oh, no. Okay, there's the big guy. Woo! Come on. All right, I'm just gonna attack the shield, I guess. Woo! Okay. Getting it right, but that's okay. We eventually cleared this gauge, so we got it. Now, what's interesting about chests and items on the battlefield, if you don't open them, they eventually open themselves for the most part. There are a few ex exceptions I've noticed, like with chests that you get to appear because of like an environmental thing that you unlocked. I, I don't know how to explain it. We might come across one later on. But for the most part, stuff falls on the ground. You could definitely run over it and pick it up. Like uh, that item over there. But if I just stay here for a second, boom, it comes to me. So, which is really good. That's something they did in Fire Emblem Warriors, but they did not do in the original Hyrule Warriors. In the original Hyrule Warriors, you did have to pick stuff up. and It was kind of annoying. Um, so I'm glad that they kind of implemented that, that lesson that they learned from Fire Emblem. It helps like the battles stay frenetic and action-packed and not have to worry about running around in loot places or that you miss something important. It'll come to you. For the most part. Like I said, there are certain chests that we might need to keep an eye out for. There might be one one of those types of chests in this battle that I can show off, but we'll see. Oh there he is. Hello. Woo! Okay, I mean yeah. Actually, lock onto him. That'll help. Come on. I'm trying to do it last minute. It's not really working for me. Now, luckily, that's not the only way. The perfect dodges aren't the only way to uh, open up these weak point gauges. I mean, you'll notice that like they kind of open up after a big attack anyways. But also, eventually, we're going to get access to Sheikah Slate abilities, and that will really help. So we should drop. Yep. And again, we don't have to pick those up at all. They will, they will open themselves up. Same thing with these rupees. If I don't pick them up, they'll come at me. Okay, pretty soon. Oh, here it is. Okay, so we're gonna get a cutscene, and uh, that'll give us eventually access to the Sheikah Slate abilities, which will be really helpful. And there's our future egg. Look at Impa pretending she can't run. You help! Huh? Why is this happening? 
can get a tower sprout, sprout right up out of the ground. This tower is kind of cool because the way that we start missions or different battles or go places in the world map is when the map is displayed, you select it and then you teleport from this tower to like the place that you're going. So it kind of keeps that theme too. So this would be like our home base. Cool, so now, now we got this cute little robot following us around. We will uh, eventually get tutorialized about the Sheik Slay abilities, so. Yep, any minute now. <laughs> There we go, remote bombs. So now I just throw them. And then it charges up after a second. I can do it again. And that helps too, like say if we had uh, one of those big Bacoblins again with the shields and he was shielding up, that would be a good chance to use the bombs and actually undo his shield and then expose his weak points a little faster. All right, then we just unlock Cryonis. Does that. That one's good for the spears, so if um, the guy with the spear charges us, but we use a cryonis to kind of trip him up last minute, uh, he'll kind of run into it, it'll shatter, and then it'll open up his weak point gauge as well. So, that's nice. So now we got few more outposts that we need to capture. So we'll go after those next. Let's see. How do we get to where we're going? I guess we can go over here. Oh, easy. There we go. Use his ability to shoot arrows. Watch out, uh, throw all those gloves at me. Alright, good place to use our special. Booyah! Alright, leader should be popping out here any second. There he is. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. So, if he decides to charge at us, we can use Cryonis to kind of stop him in his tracks. So, let's we'll see if he gives it a shot. No, so far he's just doing stabbies. Oh, I think he's gonna do it. Okay. Here we go. Oh, it's it's making a stop. Okay. I was trying to time it, but it's trying to tutorialize us, it, so it's giving us all the time we need. You do need to time it a little bit. If you do it too early or too late, obviously, it's not going to be effective. All right, got him. Ow. <laughs> Just ran right in the middle of that storm of bokoblin bats. Okay, so now we can change the character and go after the Wiz Rogue, so we're going to do that real quick. Right, now we're Impa. Impa works a little differently than Link, as obviously she does. Her right trigger, instead of doing arrows, she'll shoot out these symbols. And if you continue to use follow-up once somebody's attached to the symbol and absorb the symbol, you can create copies of yourself, like you can see these little blue copies. Now, I want to get her copies all the way up, and I just did. So now I'm working with as many copies as possible, which is great. With this Wiz Robe, we want to kind of watch out for his attacks, obviously. But he'll do this thing, typically, where he'll jump up in the air and kind of start freaking out and throwing a bunch of fire. So just uh, occasionally wandering around and casting a spell. And when that happens, it'll be a good... Oh, Flurry Rush, never mind. I was going to say it'd be a good way to get this down, but we can do it like this, too. Now I can increase the power of her special attack she's using now, using all of my doubles. Uh, and then we get the fire rod. So with the same shortcut as we would use to heal, now we have fire. Everybody uses their rods a little differently, I feel like, but bam, we just bombard that area with fire. And that's it. Now it does have a finite use, but 
if you defeat another Wizrobe, you get crystals which will replenish your fire rod, or if you get an ice rod from opening up Wizrobe and, and the you know the electric version, all of that. So and that really helps because if we were to run into like a Blizzrobe, right? He's gonna be weak to fire, so if you use our fire robe on him, it's gonna do huge damage. So that'll be those will be nice tools too, especially if you get in like a big enemy and you just use one of your runes and they're coming at you with like a attack and only a rune can stop. Your your like magic wands can kind of do double duty for that. Now her attack while she's running, she can throw shurikens. And just keep moving, which I really like. It's lizards. this guy to get some clones. I want to get a few more. If anything, at least so I can show off like the special attack when you use all your clones to do it. Oh, I messed up. I did it too early. Ah, well. It'll actually use up all your clones too if you're at full clones and use it, but you weren't, so it didn't. And the thing about her, again, they don't have very big combos, but her triangle or special attacks are also, you can see they're like really increased, the flourishes are, by the fact that she has all these copies. Like, we melted his bar just from him exposing it from an attack. So the potential with Impa is pretty fantastic, I have to say. I'm really looking forward to like what else they can, uh, what else she can pull off once she increases the length of her combo attacks. All right, go back to Link real quick. Oh wait, wait, wait. I thought he was closer, but it's about the same distance. Okay, so now he's doing the thing. There we go. I want to show us that you can knock down his uh, weak gauge with it with the bombs. I didn't really then animate those so you can see exactly what it looks like. He rises a little bit off the ground, which can be hard to aim with some characters. But okay, whatever, man. We're gonna head over here and uh, ruin somebody's day. Oh, and of course, they actually have Koroks in the game, which is pretty cool, so you can find them in battle. I saw somebody online say they've found around 13 just in the demo. I think I've only personally found maybe like five or six. So they're out there, hiding around in the usual spots, but you don't have to do much other than like just find the spot to like hit the button contextually. So it's not like overly complicated. Okay, so you see this chest right here where it was like da 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 This one, for whatever reason, unlike the chest that we unlocked in the Skull Cave and the chest that, um, you know, that, that show up whenever you beat, like, a leader, it doesn't seem to want to open by itself. I don't know why. So we are actually going to have to go over here and open it. Which is whatever. And then, I don't know what we got. I probably popped up on the side. Some drumsticks, a weapon, who knows. Whatever, it's fine probably fine. Uh, okay. But it's gone, so we did get it. So, Alright, he was about to use a charge. I probably could have used Cryonis, but I didn't.
Okay, there we go. Bam! Ah, oh, dang it, we didn't quite get it. There we go. Where's the other guy at? Oh, there he is. He got knocked back. Fair amount. All right. Let's get him. Let's bombard him with fire. Yeah. He doesn't like being on fire, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Let's see if I can get him to charge me. There we go. Boom. Got him. Okay, I think we have one more. And again, these typically open by themselves. Yep. I didn't have to press open on that at all. Uh-oh. Nice, throwing people at me. Ugh. Flurry rush. There we go. Okay, now one thing you could do... When you use Cryonis on like a puddle of water, you notice he went frozen, it freezes the enemies around them, or does other effects. So that's something to notice, just like keep stock in your environment. That kind of gave me the edge, since he wasn't giving me any kind of attack to open up his weak gauge, other than like flurry rushing, of course. And that's the first battle. You I mean, usually on these Warriors games, I'll start on easy mode, but on this one, I feel like even early on, it gives you enough tools to kind of survive. So, it took, it took a little bit longer on normal, um, but, you know, your average warrior's battle, you know, 20 minutes or less. In fact, there are a lot of skirmishes in this game, I feel like, that are even less than that. Like, they can go anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes, so. And that seems to be the type of battles they want to go for. It's just like, you know, big scale, small scale, everything in between, which I, I'm into that. Starting to feel like a little, a uh, starting to feel a little sick again. You have to bear with me here. And I'm not feeling great, guys. Tower. I hate to say it, but we have little hope of figuring this out on our own. Gonna have to go do some research with our friends Robbie and the uh, the other lady's name. The camera, what her name is? No, stop right there. Kira? No, that was no. That's the niece that isn't born yet. What is her name? I gotta go to the laboratory. Each of you has served your kingdom admirably. Huh. Kiosk. You made it. I'm glad you're safe, Impa. Yes, your highness. And I've received the Sheikah slave from Pora. Oh, okay. It was Pora. Never mind. Oh. It's your little baby robot. You want one? Your Highness. It's a really cool way to like give everybody the ability to use Sheikah Slate stuff. Like it was, it's clever. I like it. The Sheikah Slate conveyed. Especially since so much of this game is designed around it. This I mean, the original game too. Had traveled from a future of ruin, a time hmm. in the midst of the calamity, to save Princess Zelda. Hmm. Impa proposed recruiting Pura and Robbie, renowned researchers of ancient technology. Ah, yeah. That's the niece that wasn't the born yet. Okay. And investigate the mysterious tower that had appeared on Hyrule Field. King Rome of Hyrule gave his assent. All right, this should open up the map. Yeah, there we go. A little theme song. In order for Link, the Hillian Knight, you must guard the mysterious tower that has appeared. I'm told it may be important. 
As for this time-hopping guardian, is it truly deserving of our trust? He must discern this beyond any doubt with the aid of the researchers. May the goddess Hylia watch over you always. Rome, Bosphorus, Hyrule. It's the king. He's asking me to help out. All right. Boom. Silent Knight. Boom. Royal Advisor. Loyal friend. So now we got two playable characters. And we have a second mission. And then a couple of side missions. Use the Sheikah Slate to choose a destination. Tackle problems across Hyrule. Blah, blah, blah. So here we go. This is the Road to the Ancient Lab. Recommended levels three. We're there. This is a cooking pot. These are cool because, okay. So the way cooking works in this game, if you have the ingredients, you can unlock a recipe. So we're going to do that. Oh. And now we have the recipe for steamed meat, and we can use that and eat a piece before we go into any battle to augment our abilities. Uh, so we get plus 5% damage if we decide. Now we still have to use the ingredients each time we cook it, so it's not like indefinite, but you pick up tons of ingredients when you fight, so not probably a big deal. There's another one where we don't have enough. We need mighty thistles and amaranths. You can actually find these in the first battle, but like by cutting the grass, but it takes a long time. Like I've done it messing around with the demo, but like I, I really had to goof around a bit to do it. Uh, okay, and then we got here. This will give us a bonus to our one-handed weapon combo. So we're going to do that. Ain't no reason not to. And now we get an additional attack. We still have one regular attack to special. One, two special. One, two, three special. And that's it. No more specials after that. So good to remember. And we get another one for him. But we need more. This is Lysalphos. We'll get a, a bunch of Lysalphos trophies uh, soon enough. This one, I think, is for Impa. Yep. I am stronger than before. Okay, and it gives her bonus hearts. That's good. And again, we're going to need to fight more Lysalphos to get her second one as well, which, again, is not going to be hard. So, not a whole lot we can do now except for go and fight the next battle. Alright, we got our party. This is equipping weapons. So, we could go in and we can change which weapon we have equipped. We did pick up a nicer one with bonus to damage, so we'll, we'll equip that for Link. And for Impa... We'll have her quick her equip her stronger weapon too. There we go. Pretty soon we'll unlock a blacksmith where we can actually this do some cool stuff. Satisfying. So yeah, we need four each. So we're gonna cook it. What a treat! Mm -hmm. Yum yum. All right, so we got five percent damage going into this battle. And this is the road to the ancient Zelda. lab. Curious about the diminutive guardian, decided to accompany Impa on her journey to Pura's research facility in Hateno. With Link acting as bodyguard, they made their way to the ancient tech lab. Hit a blue choo choo with an elemental attack, and they'll explode in that element and damaging nearby enemies. Let's get into it. Just whistling all over the place. Look at him. He's like, no touchy. No touch. <laughs> Why is it so attached to me? Whatever could you be, little one? What are you, little robot? 
I suppose all we can do is wait for Robbie and the others at the lab to analyze it. Agreed, uh -oh. Your Highness. Uh oh. Ganon's taking over the ancient technology kind of early. Second battle. Woo! Shield deflects. All right. A guardian? But why? So, funnily enough, the first time I fought this battle, I did it completely incorrectly. Uh, you're not supposed to take on this guardian head on. And in fact, it keeps telling you if you fight it, like, it'll pop up on the screen, run away from this thing. And it takes forever to beat it. But I was bound and determined to see if I could beat it just because. And I did. But then I cut out, like, a significant chunk of this battle. And then, like, including, like, some development with, like, Zelda. And, uh, I was confused. Like, oh, she's playable now? I didn't... How did that happen? Which is really weird. Ugh. So we're going to do it the right way this time, but just know that if I really wanted to, if I was stubborn enough, I could take out that Guardian. I just don't want to. I mean, I do want to. I'm going to do it the right way. Plus, it's not as interesting to watch me, like, wail away on a Guardian for, like, 20, I don't, God, 40 minutes, maybe? I don't know how long it takes, actually. Because we're not supposed to be able to beat it. Like, we're way under level to fight that Guardian. Although the fact that I put on normal mode from jump rather than starting on easy mode, because again, easy in Warriors is relative. It's still not like super easy. Like they, they still make things difficult, but they might make it a little bit harder to where I can't uh, cheese it. Okay, we're gonna try Magnesis and take all their weapons, and then just bash them with their own weapons. Don't you guys feel dumb? We get lots of Lysalthos here, which is great. So we kind of need those for our extra combos and hearts and things. Okay. I'm going to try to pick up this metal box. Toss it at people. Alright, now we have stasis. really need to use stasis, but we could. And again, every character does theirs a little bit differently. Let's, uh, let's blow this up. Kaboom! Alright. So here's what I was talking about earlier. Now we have an ice whiz robe. We're gonna see how much we can devastate it with our fire. Bam. Look at this. He can't handle it. He's having a bad day, guys. Took down his weak point all the way with that. And he's, he's finished. And now we got our second uh, staff. Now we got a ice rod. Very cool. Oh, and again, eagle-eyed players, especially uh, veterans of Breath of the Wild, will notice that, yes, you can pull stuff out the ground if you see, like, a treasure chest or something. So, oh, that's the wrong button. Whoops. Okay. Let me open this up and see what's inside. Okay. It probably told me on the side window there. I didn't see it. It's probably a weapon or something. No big deal. All right, we need to get to Zelda's position to help her escape. Eventually, the leader of this little area is going to show up. I'm just going to kill enough of these guys. There he is. Okay, this one's probably going to need Magnesis, but we can't just do it any time we want. we got to wait until uh, we get the signal to when he gears up to throw his weapon at us, probably. Okay, there it is. Okay, so then we're gonna grab that hammer and then throw it right back at him. There he goes. He can't handle it. Oh, 
Bow. Zelda Sporging ahead, we need to do the same. I'm gonna knock a few of these boxes down, get some money, 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 money. Okay. And then pretty close to now, we're gonna get attacked by that big guard. Oh, check it out. We got another chest. And I think I saw a Korok seed. Yep. Got a weapon for Impa. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now we have two Korok seeds. I still haven't figured out what they're used for yet because they don't really do anything with them in the demo, but we'll know in a couple weeks when the game comes out. Whoa! Okay, it says flee from the Guardian while protecting Zelda. So all we want to make sure is that Zelda is not getting like caught up by this Guardian. So we'll... Distract it as best we can. It doesn't really seem to be too super, super interested in us. Oh, now it is. Oh, ow. Okay. Just, I want to leave. Okay, there we go. Uh oh. Now, I can shield deflect. It's, it's super hard in this, like a lot harder than it is in the regular Zelda game, but it can be done. Let's see if I can do it. Nope. <laughs> At least my shield didn't break, though. That's one thing. Your shield's not going to break. So unless you try to deflect too early, you shouldn't lose too much health from doing that. God, I can't get it. I'll get it eventually. I've done it. It's just... It's a rhythm. Just like with the original game. in here. We'll eventually, yeah, here we go. Cutscene time. Our little, uh, our little baby robot's gonna help us out. Boom. Got him. Now we'll get the idea that we need to go around and activate, yeah, the other, other guardians. So that's what we're gonna do. Ouch. Yikes. base in here. Let's go ahead and take this base while we're here. Yeah, when that big guy showed up originally when I fought this uh, stage, I just stayed and fought him the whole time. I didn't do anything else. I didn't see the uh, electricity whiz robe. I didn't uh, leave him in any other traps. I just whittled him down little by little his HP. And it took forever. And it's not a smart way to do things. We're not going to do that today. I'm just really stubborn. When something says, don't kill it, I'm like, nah, we're going to kill it. Although technically it's not like don't kill it. It's just like don't waste your time trying to hit it. Work smart, not hard. That's weird. Where's the uh, head honcho here? He should be showing up somewhere. Hey. 
Maybe he's up here. There he is. I see you. Got it. Yeah, again, these open up eventually, so. Now what sucks, my instinct is just to jump off the side here, or whatever, and that's not, unfortunately, something that you can do, so. But you can, you can wall jump the side off here, and do this, and glide, but you can't glide off the side of the thing. Because them's the rules in the Hyrule Warriors games. Which I kind of get. They gotta keep in balance because of the nature of how they set up these battle maps. That's one of the things I'm actually really excited to see is uh, them fleshing out some of the areas from, you know, the original Breath of the Wild, but not having ruins. Like, it was cool to see the castle in that area, but looking forward to seeing some of the other towns and stuff. Oh, show. Okay. Take down this electric whiz robe. Ah. Gonna do the yes. We're gonna shoot with bombs. There we go. We should take him down the rest of the way. Got it. Now we got ourselves an electric rod. Be uh, pretty helpful actually when we're fighting the the guardian here pretty soon. Okay, so we need to go in here and activate. Oh, I didn't see him come through with that. Ooh. Man, he really wants me to use a lightning rod. I guess I could. I'm surprised it didn't cause him to drop his weapon. Alright, we got this guy. Activate the unearthed guardian. Okay. We'll do. Let's see him. How we get to him over here? There's a chest we gotta manually open. Let's say we activate this guy. And if the guardian's close enough, he'll automatically shoot him. If not. Then it'll ask us to bring the Guardian closer. But he was close enough, so we're good. Okay. Now we need to go to the next area. So we're going to go ahead and fling ourselves off the side here. And... Let's see. Where can we go? Uh-oh. Ah! Still couldn't get the hang of deflecting. Move, move. Hey, well, now we can play as Zelda. We'll try her out. There we go. Where's she at? Where are you at, Zelda? You're all... You're all... Wow. Awesome. Way to be a team player, Zelda. Okay. So Zelda is extra weird uh, because she doesn't really have expertise with weapons and she doesn't have her, uh, her spirit magic yet. So she fights exclusively with runes. And they kind of work... I'm going to be happier if we can get one more addition to her combo. But this is her attack strength. So she throws up boxes. Yeah, just that. Just metal, ice, stasis. Now, if she does one and then special, she can just bring up ice and then explode them. She can bring up the box and fling it around. Or, this is my personal favorite, she can bring up a bomb and throw it forward and then... Press R2 to explode her ruins, which would include that bomb. 
so R2 will activate any active any runes that are like on the field of battle. So I like rolling the bomb into a big group of enemies and just exploding it. That's pretty much the thing to do with her right now. Um, I have a feeling that she'll probably here. Let's, let's wall jump for fun and then just oh wait that work. Hold on. I wanted to come on active paraglide woman. <laughs> paraglide I say. She doesn't want to paraglide. Fine. I thought that'd be fun to go paragliding down the, the hill, but she's not cooperating with me. But yeah, I think she'll really start to open up as her combos open up, I think. We'll just have to wait and see how that goes. This guy's so angry. She just do that while she's running. Yeah. She just activates the ice runes while she's running. Fair enough. Alright, we're gonna go around here and activate this other guardian, and then if we have to, we might need to lure the guardian to it to defeat it. That's right. Okay. There we go. Let's so get a shield down. Oh, not all the way. Okay. Down again. Cool. So, like... I said it before, but everybody does their Sheikah stuff differently. So, for example, we know that Link, when he does his bombs, he'll just, like, chuck a bunch of bombs forward, kind of like almost the way that he chucks his arrows. But for her, if she were to use it, she summons, like, a little bomb robot that just automatically spits out bombs everywhere while you're controlling it. And it's kind of interesting. It's actually my favorite, I think, because it takes the focus completely away from the character. It's a good safety, especially if things get hairy. And the fact that it just kind of chucks bombs all over means it's easy to aim. Pure's is probably the hardest to aim because of how she throws hers, like, really far forward. So her bomb can be tough for these whiz robes, especially. Bomb guy. He's really easy to hit with that. I'm guessing just like Link's gonna have like other um, weapons that he can use, so he'll basically be a whole different character, like two-handed Link versus one-handed, that type of thing. Eventually, sometime in the story, Zelda will get her powers or get access to some of them. And then she'll probably end up having, like, a version where she fights using Sheikah Slate abilities and a version where she fights using her spirit powers. I'm assuming. I don't know for 100% sure how they're going to do that, because technically I don't think her powers unlock until, like, right at the very, very end. And that's how she's able to uh, save Link and, you know, hold off Ganon and whatnot. Whoops, wrong one. So I just did her special. She takes pictures of a bunch of stuff and attacks them. We wasted it. Okay. So, now the tar it says the target's out of range. So what we gotta do is we have to bring... We have to go and lure the uh, Guardian to our spot here. Okay. He's down this way, so... I'm gonna go. Let's go uh, jam our thumb up his butthole. That should really piss him off. Hey, you! Come over here and talk that mess. Ooh, sick dodge. I like how like her dot her shield is just like framing up a, a, a picture. 
I wonder if I can deflect with this. Nope, and that almost killed me. Okay. Oh, ouch, okay. That didn't actually do too bad, though. Maybe it does block. Okay, how come... Okay, there we go. Come on. Come on. Oh. I don't know if they hit her or not. Okay, where's Link at? Oh, of course you're way down here. Link, come on, man. Alright, Pura is actually nearby. I'll use her instead. symbols here so I can get all my copies. There we go. Okay, that's that. We're at the uh, ancient lab. We should be able to pop in and say what's up. Uh-oh. There's a bad guardian spy. Slates, or they call them ancient memory parts. That she uses for her weapons. Cool. We got dishes and all kinds of good stuff. This is technology, the likes of which I've never laid eyes on. Which means we've got ourselves. Brand new, never before witness, Guardian Battle! <laughs> Alright. Devices like the Sheikah Slate, which are amplified by the power of such ancient relics, are but a meager fragment of such technology. I see. That explains why all of us were able to use the Sheikah Slate. In addition! This here doohickey is loaded with data. Information. We can't even fathom. Oh, here comes Pura. Oh, yeah. Check it. Still posing. <laughs> I, I extracted some visual data from the Guardian's memory. Yep, 
No doubt about it. Hyrule Castle after Calamity Ganon has been revived. As you can see, we managed to extract some of the data, but much of it was fragmented. Even so, if I analyze what we received, I may be able to make sense of more of it. This is... the ruin the Calamity will bring upon all of Hyrule. If we allow this to pass, I fear all hope will be lost. Even everything we've done up until now likely won't be enough. If I don't succeed at sealing the Calamity... Never. This will not come to pass. All right. To stop Calamity Ganon, it was crucial that they possess the sword that seals the darkness, the latent power dwelling within the Princess of Hyrule, and the might of the four divine beasts unearthed from across the land. We got our mission, we gotta get the beasts, gotta get the weapons. However, the path to victory was strewn with obstacles. Korok Forest, where the legendary sword slept, had been overrun by monsters, and the Princess of Hyrule's power showed no signs of awakening. Lamenting the kingdom's plight, King Rome sent his daughter to gather pilots for the Divine Beasts. Alongside Link, whose brave conduct had earned him a role as her knight, Zelda would meet with each of the four candidates. And that, uh, that'll actually kick off Chapter 2, us going after the four candidates, which is not in the demo, so... You intend to let this relic follow you around? Yes. After talking to Pura and Robbie, we thought it would be best. I will remind you once again. Above all else, your duty is of the utmost importance. Are we clear? Yes, we are clear, I understand. And I will honor my duty. sets that up of course we know people who play breath of the wild how that kind of goes the dynamic between her and her dad and you can get real upset because she can't seem to unlock her powers and her not being too happy about it either but wanting to do something to help so what are you gonna do all right so i think we're gonna stop there because it's been an hour and there's only so far i can go in the demo anyways but I think next week we'll pop in the demo again. And then, I, like I said, by the following Monday, I should have the game unlocked. And any progress you make in the demo actually carries over into the main game, which is really cool. So we should actually be able, kind of stretching content a little bit, but we should be able to finish the story mode uh, of the game on Mondays on stream. Just take a break from doing like different brawlers and stick to one for a bit. So since it's new and fresh and fun, everybody wants to check it out. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So tomorrow I'll be doing the mainstream again, Hades, 8 o'clock. And I don't know how fast Miles Morales is going to get here, but I do have it on order from Best Buy. And I've been getting notifications from FedEx that my PlayStation 5 should arrive on Thursday. So there's a chance Thursday will be the first episode of Miles, but if not, it will definitely be Saturday. So we're looking at Hades on Tuesday, tomorrow. Hades on Thursday or Miles Morales and either way definitely start Miles by Saturday and I think we're still playing Outlast 2 for horror games on Friday again I'm just carrying over last week to this week so that's how we're going to do it uh, but yeah thanks for those who decided to stop by and check me out uh, definitely check out this week's podcast and I guessed it on call it like I don't see it podcast this week uh, GP and AD are the hosts a couple of really cool guys from Houston so if you're into our show and you like what we do, I would encourage checking them out as well. Uh, I think we're on episode 19 of their show. So, yeah, definitely check that out. And we'll uh, see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye.